my channel. It is Tiffany. I hope you guys are doing well. And um, listen, guys, we are just really tracking through to the end of the year. And I have a message for you that I want to share with you because I know a lot of us right now have so much information out there that is really encouraging us to expand, to go deeper, to go wider, you know, um, as we transition into 2020. And it's nothing wrong with that because it's just kind of really motiv motivating us to just kind of keep it going strong. Amen. As we transition into 2020, listen, it's the last, we're in the last decade of, in the last decade or in the last weeks of this decade rather. And a lot of people have expectation and believing that God is going to do amazing things in their life. A lot of people are just believing God for miracles and so on and so forth. And, um, as we focus on this year, a lot of us kind of went through some difficult, you know, times, some struggling moments. A lot of us also experienced some highlight and some victories as well. So now that we have reached this place in December, in the, in the latter portion of December, we have reached this place, we arrived at this destination. Now we have this question in our heart, where do we go from here? And a lot of us want to continue to go deeper and to expand ourselves. But the reality is that a lot of us, you know, um, or statistic rather say that we start the year strong with, you know, resolutions and goals and so on and so forth. But as life happens, a lot of us kind of fade in the black. We kind of fade back. We take a step back from pursuing what it is that God have placed on our heart. And I really wanted to do this video just to kind of encourage you guys that as you transition into 2020 and as, you know, obstacle arises, as life happens, I really want to encourage you with this message to kind of continue going. And how I'm going to do that is by just kind of reviewing and looking at Psalm 23, 23 verses 1, 2, 3. And I really want to break that down for you and just kind of really give you uh, insight and hopefully it encourage you and um, just kind of inspires you inspire you that as you are in 2020 and as you are hitting the, the ground running and believe in God that you understand that the Lord is your shepherd and he is yours he belongs to you so to speak amen so let's take a look at closer look at the scripture which is Psalm 23 and is written by David and I want us to kind of go over that so the psalmist David, he started out in verse one by saying the Lord is mine. And I absolutely love that because who are we to own possession of God or own possession of the Lord? And this is what I love about the Christian faith is that Jesus is our personal savior. Not any and all a religion will allow you to say that God is yours, that the Lord is mine. Amen. And that's what unique about our faith is that we have a intimate and a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So let me read Psalms 23 for you verses 1 to 3. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. And this is an NIV version, and we're going to break this thing down. And what I mean by break it down is that I want us to look at what David really means or what was in his thought when he wrote this. Amen. So he started by saying, the Lord is mine. I absolutely love that, which I just finished explaining to you guys. I absolutely love that. So having ownership or taking ownership means taking responsibility as well. By saying that the Lord is yours, that means that there's a relationship that was already been established between David and the Lord for him to say that the Lord is mine. But as he as he transitioned, his very next word is that the Lord is my shepherd, which I love because if you were if you don't know the story of David, David was a shepherd boy. So when he said that the Lord is my shepherd, he has personal experience with a shepherd and a sheep relationship. The Lord is my shepherd. If the Lord is your shepherd, that means you have to be his sheep. Amen. And David is saying that the Lord is my shepherd, but I am his sheep. So there's a relationship there that's been established based on trust. Amen. And he said that I lack nothing. Because the Lord is my shepherd and I am the sheep, I lack nothing. But before we get more into verse 2, let's kind of break down verse 1. A shepherd, if you do not know, is a person who tends, protect, guides, and feed sheep. Amen. And if the Lord is mine, which is speaking of a personal savior or personal relationship that is built on trust, then I am the sheep. And if you are the sheep, there is a place of belonging for you in this relationship with Christ, with God. 
You don't ever have to feel isolated or feel that you are alone or feel like you don't belong somewhere if you don't belong to your family. If your mother has rejected you, if your father has rejected you, if you have been abandoned, if you have been neglected, understand that in the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep relationship that you have with the Lord, that there's a place for you, specifically you. Yes, you. There's a place for you in the Lord, in, in God. Amen. And when you're in that special place, the Bible speak of the secret place. Um, this is where you now have to understand that with this shepherd and sheep relationship, you have to solely depend on God to protect you, to feed you, to guide you, and so on and so forth. Amen. So now let's, let's tackle verse two, because I don't want this video to, to, to be too long. David said, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside quiet waters. What does that mean? What that means is that, um, and before we get into that, let's tackle I lack nothing. So the Bible have, I want to share two scriptures with you. And the Bible says that God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, which is seen in, in Philippians 4, 19. And I absolutely love this second verse, this other scripture that I'm going to share with you. And it's taken from Psalm 34. So let's find that real quickly. 34 verse 10. And it reads, the, the lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And that is what's super amazing about this text here. Because David is encouraging and letting you know that I lack nothing because the Lord is my shepherd and I'm his sheep. And a shepherd is supposed to tend, feed, protect, and guide. Amen. So there's no lack of where you're concerned and as you transition in 2020 i want you to transition with the understanding that the lord is yours and he's not just yours but he's your shepherd and you should build a relationship um with your shepherd because you are a sheep amen and the bible says that in the new testament jesus says that my sheep will know my voice so jesus also is referencing so to speak about this relationship that david has um shared with us that he has with the lord where the lord is his shepherd and he has and he is the sheep amen and what interesting enough is that when you consider yourself a sheep you consider yourself not the smartest person because a sheep needs and depend on the shepherd because they don't know how to take care of themselves and i love the fact that even though david understand the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep because he was a shepherd boy he is not afraid to take that humble position to say that listen i am a sheep and the lord is my shepherd Amen. Because he understands that there is something in God. There's something in this unique relationship between a shepherd and a sheep. That he understands that there's nothing that a sheep can do on their own independently. That they have to depend solely on the shepherd. Solely on the Lord. Matter of fact, there's a song that I absolutely adore that says that you will leave the 99 to come and find me. And that is the heart of a shepherd. The heart of a shepherd is that he will do whatever he needs to do to protect. He will fight bears and lions. He will fight wolves. He will fight anyone that would try to take you out, that would try to devour you, that would try to um, hurt you. The Bible says that the shepherd, amen, is a protector. Okay? He is a protector. And it's not just the Bible, but that's just the definition, the characteristic of a shepherd. Okay, so again, you will lack nothing. So let's take a look at verse two. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. I absolutely love that because one of the things that stand out to me is that the Lord makes us to lie down, that speak of rest. And I believe, guys, that there's a season for rest for the people of God. There's a unique rest for the people of God. And sometimes God will call us into a season of rest, a season of us to take a break, a season where we can just shut down and just allow God to minister to our souls, to minister to our heart. But one of the things that stand out to me is not only rest, but there's peace, there's guidance. And what is so beautiful is that he makes you not lie down in green pastures. Do you know what a green pastures green pasture is? Do you know what a green meadow is? In certain Bible, um, in certain uh, Bible, uh, different Bible versions, it says green meadows. And I'm going to read what a meadow is. A meadow is a, a meadow is an open field of lush grass filled with butterflies, birds, and room for you to run and explore. 
So I love the fact that the, that David included this in this beautiful psalm where he said, the Lord makes me to lie down and Lord allow me to rest. And not only rest anywhere, guys, He won't, God won't allow us to lay our head anywhere, but he allows us to lay our head in green pastures, a place where it's an open field, where there's lush grass, a place where there's protection, a place where there's comfort, a place where you feel secure, a place where you can close your eyes and you can know that the shepherd is watching over you. Amen. So it says here, he makes you lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Can you imagine with me that I just described what a meadow is? Can you imagine a, a stream of beautiful running water that is still water? So not running, but still water. And it's just trickling and the sound of it is just so amazing. Matter of fact, they have these, you know, they have these audio sounds of rivers and of water and it's supposed to calm us. It's supposed to kind of create this atmosphere where we can be at peace. But the Bible says that we don't have to listen to an audio to create this atmosphere of peace because the Bible says that he make us a lot down in green pastures and lead us beside quiet waters. So if you allow yourself to rest in 2020, when you come up against opposition, when you come up against trial and tribulation, he'll allow you, he will create the space for you to be able to rest with tranquility. Not tranquility that is forced and man-made from sounds, but natural, natural and authentic quiet and still waters. Amen. Where butterflies and birds are just in their habitant, habitant and being who they are, who God has created them to be. A field of lush grass where you can just lay your head in peace and in rest. A place where you can stand up again and explore without feeling like you are being watched or being criticized or explore because you don't understand the thing. If someone may think that you're ignorant or someone may think that you're not well, well learned or, you know, or you don't have the knowledge or you don't have the experience, but you can explore freely. You can explore, explore freely in Christ. Amen. So Isaiah 30 verse 15 talks about quietness. And the still waters, when I think about that and having a season of rest, I think about Isaiah 30 verse 15 where it says, In quietness and in confidence will be my strength. So believe it or not, when you are in a quiet place, when you are in a place by the still waters, it is strength for you. Amen? It is strength for you. So when you are resting and when God has called you into a restful season, it's not to take away anything from you. It's to strengthen you. Amen. So as we look at further in verse three, it says he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. I love that because Jesus is saying or David is saying rather for his name's sake. And the Bible says that Jesus name is exalted. His name is high, is exalted above even the word of God. So for his name's sake, that means saying that I'm putting my stamp of approval for his name's sake, he will restore you. For his name's sake, he will renew you. For his name's sake, he will protect you and comfort you. So as we are transitioned into 2020 and we may be going through a difficult moment or maybe the year doesn't start off with a bang. Maybe the bang that start off with is trouble, chaos. And I'm not speaking that into your life, but there, there's times when this happens. Where the year kicks off with stress and feeling overwhelmed and feeling frustrated and the year may kick off with you losing your job or what have you. But understand that the scripture is saying that God, your shepherd, the Lord is yours. He's your shepherd. He will provide. He will protect. He will guide. He will feed. But he will also restore. He will also renew. He will also comfort and protect. For the Bible says that he refreshes my soul. So when you feel depleted, when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel frustrated, the Bible says that he will refresh your soul. He will guide you along the right path for his namesake. So if you're looking for where do I go from here? The Bible says that he will guide you along the path. But the only way that the scripture can show true to you and you can resonate with this verse this Bible chapter, Psalm 23, verses 1 through 3. Unless you humble yourself and become a sheep and allow Jesus to be your shepherd. Allow the Lord to be your shepherd. And when you do that, you are now given, given the Lord 
free reign in your life to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. To enable you to have quietness and confidence and in, the, in, and in that same breath, strengthening you, renewing you, restoring you, protecting you, and giving you comfort. Amen. And that's what all of us want, to be quite honest with you. We want to be comforted. We want to be protected. We want to be renewed when we feel overwhelmed and feel, we want to be refreshed. But we also want our needs to be taken care of. We want to be fed. We want to be tend to. And this is what I love because Jesus is your personal savior and he will do that for you if you allow him to. So where do we go from here? We will be able to go along the right path if we apply this scripture. So I really hope that this video is helpful. Take this and hide it in your heart so you don't sin against the Lord as we transition into 2020. This is what I want to share with you. And I was definitely encouraged by Psalm 23, by a devotion that I'm doing by Jennifer Rothschild. So I really hope that you read it. It's on the Bible app. And this is what I want to share with you today. Peace and love, guys. Bye.